why we rejoice today is because we have breath in us. The dead cannot worship you. So no matter what the situation if you are at any point in time, in as much you keep us alive here, we have made a mind to worship you. We will give you all the glory in every situation. Amen. For you are a good God. Yes, Lord. Thank you for what you have done so far. Amen. Thank you for what you are doing. Amen. And thank you for what you are about to do. Amen. And as we gather again, I take control of this atmosphere. Yes, I release the blood of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I bind every contrary spirit. Name of Jesus. And I declare the liberty to wash. Amen. Thank you for your angels that are already here. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, wherever two or three shall gather in my name, yes, Lord. I will be there again. Amen. So that we know you are here. Do something new in our life. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Take a seat. God bless you. I welcome you all to Christ in our life center. Christ Spirit with Angelica Ministry. Always remember, we are alive by grace and by mercy. Nobody has a right to be here. If everyone has a right to be here, there will never be any miscarriage. God's mercy brought us here. Nobody has a right to continue to be here. If we all have a right to continue to be here, nobody will ever doubt. But God gave us something called privilege. And we must not abuse privilege. Privilege must be appreciated. Privilege must also be thanked for those privilege. You can fight for your right, but God by mercy prevailed on time to keep us alive. Hear this, he has not kept me and you here by accident. God doesn't just waste purpose. There is a reason why you exist. And he said in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know that take away that burden from your chest. You don't need to know. You don't need to know why God kept you here. Because once you know what he will set in, once you know your purpose, I've been hearing it, you must know your purpose. But my Bible says, for I know what God revealed to you is yours. What he didn't reveal to you, don't worry about it. If you don't know why you are inside your mother's womb, don't start chasing shadow. For I know the plans and the thoughts is the one that has the plan and he kept it to his chest. Is the one that is thinking about how to make it happen. Here it is. This is the difference between God and man. God does not worry. God think. Thinking is not wrong. Worry is. But for human, there is a dividing line that we don't know when we always cross it. You see, I'm thinking about the situation. But when you think about what you cannot achieve or what you cannot make to happen, the next stage is you begin to worry about it. Let God be the thinker. Is a think tank of life. He said, Jeremiah, don't worry yourself. In your thinking process, you will cross into worry zone. But let me do the thinking for you. Maybe that's why the Bible says, do not rely upon your own understanding. It didn't say in some of your ways, it said, in all of your ways, just acknowledge it and say, I will order your plan. Life could be so simple if we can take the manual that God is giving to us. We'll be entering 2020. Every faces I see here, I will see you on the other side. Amen. The devil will not terminate any of us in the name of the Lord Jesus. But as we enter into this new year, there is a key goal on us to hold very seriously today. And that is be thankful. Thank God. And the message today is, thank God for it is good. I read from the book of Psalm 107. I wanted to continue to teach the topic I've been teaching before, but as I begin to speak with looking for it, the Holy Spirit said, today is the completion of fasting and worship. For the past one week, the church has been undergoing a process of we fast, not to pray. That is what is common in Christendom. 
you must fast and pray. And in the process of fasting and praying, 99% of it is always God give, God give, God give, God give. I'm not saying it's wrong. After all, the Bible says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cared for you. But by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we discover another dimension. A dimension that God himself cannot say no to. Providing there is no iniquity, providing there is no sin, providing we are led by the Holy Spirit, providing we don't walk in disobedience, I discovered that a new tool that moves the hand of God quickly is when you fast and you also worship. The Bible told me about Paul and Silas. The two of them in the middle of the night, there is no lawyer they can call. Lawyer is sleeping. And the magistrates said, put them in that prison. They knock the throne of heaven, not in complaint, not in bitterness, not in anger. I can see Paul turning to Silas, and Silas turning to Paul and said, the only way we can attack God right now, not because he's sleep or slumber, is for us to worship him. The Bible says they begin to sing. They begin to pray. And while they were doing that, attention of heaven was drawn into it. Why? My Bible says God inhabits in the praises of his people. So when you get to a dimension, where this new year as you are entering into it, you decided that what factor you will not take away from your life is to worship God. No matter the situation, you will always be above. Amen. Hear me very well. In every challenging time you go to, remember one thing. Somebody must take the worship. Either God or Satan. The three Hebrews were inside the fire. The fire was heated. They were staring death in the face. But you remember what David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? There is a rod on this side. There is a staff of God on this side. And they thought, what should we do if God is looking after security? Let us worship him. And no wonder the best the fire can do was to remove the shackles that bind them. And the worship was so deep that Christ had to come down. A foreign king who is a Gentile said, I saw the image of the Son of God. Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. For his mercy endureth forever. So I believe that even after we left this planet Earth and the new earth that God will bring, the mercy of God will always be. For his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, who he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered them out of the lands from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. He delivered them out of their distresses. As I read this place, I will be reading as far as the Lord is leading me. Please, I want you to be looking uh, into how your journey was this year. As we were told, uh, we have only one more Sunday, and 2019 will be history. There will be many of these I'll be reading now, of these verses, that will be relevant to our situation. And as you see the relevant, give thanks unto the Lord in your heart. Seven. And he led them forth by the night, by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. All the men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, 
because they rebelled against the word of God and contented the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then, even this category of people, they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. 14. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and break their bounds in sunder. All that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful work to the children of men. I want to stop there and do some, you know, a, a word of encouragement as the Holy Spirit lead me. The Bible started in verse 1. Give thanks. Give thanks. How appreciative are we? Let's start from ourselves. How appreciative of ourselves are we? Here it is. If you cannot appreciate you, you cannot appreciate other, talk less of appreciating God. If you are in a state right now where you thought, what am I appreciating for? Look at me. What did I have? How have I achieved? What has life given to me? Go to the hospital. See somebody that is praying to have that you. That you. That you that can lift your hand early in the morning and you take your brush and you wash your teeth. That you. Some people that have stroke right now, they cannot wash their teeth themselves. Somebody have to do it for them. Appreciate you. And appreciating you starting from looking at who you are, no matter what the case is, and say, Lord, I want to be grateful. What you cannot make and you were given, thank God for it. Even if it's not the way you expected it today, there is a better tomorrow. Be thankful. Let it be a new habit that we cultivate in this new year. Appreciate everything around you. My father of late memory, when we go to the farm, it's an agriculturist, but he likes farming. He's a teacher. When we go to the farm, he will look at the, the greeneries, uh, the, the corns, the maize, you know, the yams as they were growing. He will touch the leaves and say, Lord, you have done it. What, how is, it? What, is this man all right? What is the big deal about green grass? How does he look at how that one came out? This God is wonderful. Now I can realize what you do not appreciate is because you don't know the value of what he added to you. Can I take you a little bit deeper? You go around, you see grasses everywhere. Do you know those things supply you oxygen? If every green area disappear on the face of the earth today, how do we breathe? Appreciate everything. Be thankful. The Bible says, give thanks unto the Lord. Can I now draw it in? As you appreciate yourself, you appreciate everything, let the thanks go to God. I do not like one phrase when people call me to say, thank you, sir. I always deny it. I say, no. You want to say, God bless me, I appreciate that, but thank God. The Bible says, thank the Lord. For me to thank the Lord means I must have a relationship. I must know who I'm giving my thanks to. People like to thank themselves. People like to thank others. But the Bible says, give your thanks to the Lord. And when I look at it in my Bible, it was capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Who are we giving our thanks to in 2019 that is going on? You should be appreciative. But remember, whoever assisted you one way or the other, it was because God gets involved. If there is no God behind it, it's a labor in vain. The Bible says, except the Lord build the house, the laborers labored in vain. Appreciate God. The Bible says, give thanks unto the Lord. There may be time, because of what we are going through, the question will be, for what? Even if through this year you have not received any good thing from God, which I doubt it, the fact that you are breathing means God has done something. The Bible says, because by nature, by character, God is good. Look at me. If you look at me, you said, what do you know about this man? He said, I know he's the man. Number two, what can you say? He has a black skin. God has a nature. The description of God is called G-O-O-D. When you move one air from it, you get God. God is good. 
When somebody is good by nature, they are good. No matter what is thrown on them, it doesn't change who they are. They don't react to a certain situation because of who they are. You will be expecting constancy because that is who that person is meant to be. The nature of God is, is good. And every time you wake up from your bed and you declare it, God is good. You have just neutralized every negative thinking that they want to embarrass you that day. No matter the challenges that come your way that day, as you say, Lord, you are good. You just profess a declaration that power of darkness can always stand. The enemy wants us to operate in ignorance. And ignorance is the worst disease of our time. What you don't know is what kills people. He said, if I don't know, I don't know. No, sir. Find out. Because by the time you find out, you know, you come to a realization that what you do not know is already killing. For example, somebody that has high blood pressure. He said, go to hospital. He said, no, 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 no. If I don't know, it's okay. At least I will not know uh, cancer. If I don't find out, it's okay. But you have this symptom. Forget it. Just pretend that it's not there. Ignorance kills. When the devil knows you know that God by nature is good, he won't try you. When he came to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he was trying to give an impression that God is mean. Oh, that was the impression Satan was giving Jesus. Your heavenly father is too mean. That even after you have fasted for 40 days, you have obeyed him. You've been talking to him. He's so mean that I cannot provide for your needs. See, you are hungry. But I have provision. I can turn stones to bread for you. And what you need to do is just misuse your authority. Command these stones to become bread. Christ recognized the goodness of his father. And he responded by, man shall not live by bread alone. But by the goodness of God, by every word. Because the goodness of God is hidden in his spoken word. When the world was without shape, without form, how does God show his goodness on planet Earth? He said, let there be. And the Bible said, and there was. Every day you come to a level of knowledge that God by nature is good. You create a new environment around yourself that the enemy cannot penetrate. The devil want to penetrate by fear. The devil want to penetrate by worries. Look at us. As you are entering into 2020, some people are already panicking. What does the future hold for the economy of the United Kingdom? What is going to happen in the nation of the world? They are painting in black doom and gloom. But if you remember that God is good, you will come to a realization His goodness sustains me so far. That goodness will take me on. The Bible says thank you. The reason why some Christians are not thankful is because we are ignorant of the nature of God, that God is good. And how do you know more of the goodness of God? By learning to know him better as Lord. Hear what the Bible says. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. The more you have his lordship over your life, the more you will be able to say, I know God is good. I will be expecting if you ask my children, as human as I am, what will you say about your dad? Is your dad good? It would be embarrassing if my children said I'm not good. It would be embarrassing if my wife said I'm not good. Because in my little way, I believe I'm good. God wants to see your reactions when challenges come your way. Christ asked a question. He said, let me test my people that surrounded me for a number of years. I always say this, in every situation at least you will have somebody that will stood for you. Oh yeah, somebody that will say, I know that person is not like that. There are people in this house now I can stood for. If you come and block me, I say, no, 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 no. For the years of relationship, that's not that. Jesus said, what do people call me? Thank God none of the disciples said, you are a rapist. None of the disciples said, ah, you are harsh, you are difficult. Oh, some people say the day when that woman came, the way you talk to that woman, you call, you told her, this is food for sons, it's not for dogs, so you have attitude. 
None of the disciples say that. Because they know who Christ is to some extent. But the level of knowledge was so limited. Christ now said, what do you call me? None of them can answer. They've been with him for three and a half years. Or three years old. Still they don't know who he is. The only man that stood up and talked was Peter. And Christ confirmed. He said, do you know the reason why the rest of the disciples cannot say anything about me? Because they don't know the nature of God. He said, flesh and blood have not shown you this, Peter. But my father tell you where. Hear what the Bible says. He said, give thanks unto the Lord. Who is the Lord? When I research in my Bible, I discover that anywhere you see G-O-D, it refers to the Heavenly Father in his supremacy as the head of the earth and heaven. But when you hear N-O-D, it refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's narrow it down. Everybody will say we are thanking God. But you as a believer, it's not just about thanking God. Thank the Lord Jesus. Because he's the Lord of your life. Have you made him the Lord of your life? Ye are the Son of God. Flesh and blood have not shown you this. There must be a revelation for we to understand him as Lord, accept him as Lord, and know that he too has the nature of God. Christ is the Lord and is also good. It's a general statement when Christians begin to minister. God is good. A Muslim too will tell you God is good. But if you really go into it, they are telling you Allah is good. Many religions have different things they call God. But when you drill down truly, it's not referring to the one you are talking about. But for a born again Christian who realize that through Christ I got whatever I am holding to today. Here it is. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in what? In my name. So you cannot ignore the fact that without Christ's name for a believer in this season, nothing will be given by God. The key access to God is that name of Jesus. And he said, look, my disciples, you are my, and your Lord, and you are my servant. When you need anything, because I know you won't use it on sinful nature. I know you will not use it on iniquity. Anything you need, and it based it on John chapter 15, verse 6 and 7. If my word abide in you, and you abide in me, you will ask for whatsoever you want, and it shall be given to you. So, knock on the door of heaven. Ask my father, hello, daddy. Yes, who is talking? Uh, my name is Martin Jesus. Oh, I can see the blood. Right? What do you need? In the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm asking this. I said, God will give it to you. God will give it to you. So as we enter 2020, recognize his lordship. What makes children good children in the home is they recognize the position of their parents. When you see a child that live under a parent, feet on the parent, cloth on the parent, and at the end of the day say, I am a big guy and I can do what I wanted. It doesn't matter the culture. You are about to go and do for your own house. Oh yes, I thought the only society that doesn't practice that too often are the African society. A white man, a shaman will tell you, if you will not listen to me, if you believe you are now big enough to look after your own needs and you want to be the one making decisions, not in my home, you can go out and set up. Then you can start doing your things. But recently I began to say the Africans are doing it too. You'll be hearing there cannot be two masters in this ship. I pay the rent, so I am the parent. God! The Bible says, give thanks to the Lord. Channel your thanks to the one you serve as Lord. The question is, are we serving him as Lord? As this year is going to an end, has he been your Lord throughout 2019? Those steps we took, is it our human understanding or is it the Lordship of Jesus Christ? He is the Lord. He is good. And the Bible says, His mercy endure it forever. Draw that into your understanding. If things were wrong in 2019, God's mercy has not faded off. And that's the difference between grace and mercy. The Bible says you cannot continue to be in sin and say, let grace expand, but mercy can expand. 
Grace has limitation, even though it's elastic. But mercy has no limitation. It is mercy that saved me and you from the doom of hell by grace. The mercy of God, the Bible said it here, endure it forever. If the devil is telling you you are not qualified because you have not walked right, you have not taught right, you have not done it fully the way God wanted, let the devil understand, I am a work in progress. And because I am applying to the mercy of God, I will hold on to the mercy seat. The Lord will bring to pass what he promised in my life. Hear this. It's mercy enduring forever. This is the understanding that the like of David had. And even with what he did, such a grievous situation of a powerful uh, king, who the Bible also referred to as a prophet, a psalmist, a worship leader, call, call David anything, he, he can fit into those, he's a pastor, he's, he's everything. I was glad when they say unto me, come let's go to the house of the Lord. A man that's always fervent in church, a man that is so sacrificial. A man that there's nothing he cannot give to God. Hear this. A man that does not play with the word of the prophet. A man that God speaks to. He now finds himself in adultery. He realized that if care is not taken, grace is slipping away. Because we cannot continue to be in sin and say, let the grace of God abound. In Psalm 51, he recognizes one more chance. There is something I can do without. He said, Lord, have mercy on me. But for mercy, David was restored. The kingdom of King Saul was tear down. The Bible said, thank him for his mercy that endured forever. It has been the mercy of God that kept you and I through this year. Several accidents has happened. Because you don't know, doesn't mean you may not have been the victim. But God will work it out in a way that somebody else take the space. Oh, it's in the Bible. He said, if it is a must that somebody must die, I will replace your life with the life of somebody else. When I read that, I said, wow. Wow. A person that I know went to Lagos, Nigeria to go and collect a visa when she's about to travel to the U.S. And as she was coming back, the enemy wanted to target her. The car or the bus she entered, she was the one that's meant to enter the bus, and somebody overrides her and push her outside and start to die. And person, I'm not dropping. Ah, I've been here. This is my say, no, 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 no. I need to go now, 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 now. And you know, in that area is survival of the fittest. So she moved back. The bus went, possibly people nearby said, look, relax, you get another one. About 20, 30 minutes later, another one came, she jumped into it, and they drove not too far away into the distance. The car, uh, the boss, that there was a conflict of his means, not me, got an accident. Everybody died except one person on the other side. The seat where she was fighting to sit, the person there was one of those that passed on. Definitely she would have gone. She never knew before when there was that tussle. It's my seat, it's not my seat, that God was replacing life. God was exchanging like God was saying, if it is a must, this must happen, I will take somebody's life and replace it with yours. Isn't it that? Yeah. It's messy. Number two, verse two. The Bible said, these are the kind of people that can do what is in verse one. It becomes narrower. Because everybody will thank you. I am thanking God. The question you should ask them is, which God? Me, I am taking who I am serving as Lord. A person I have relationship with. And he put a class of people that are qualified by grace. To call him Lord. Verse 2 said, let the redeemed of the Lord. Anybody can call him Lord, Lord, Lord. But the question is, are you part of the redeemed of the Lord? An event will happen on planet Earth. I don't know when. It could be another 50 years to come. It could be less. It could even be more. Rapture will happen. On the day of rapture, I pray that you and I will not be found wanting. Amen. When I minister on those points, 
I don't minister with cocky head as if I have attained. Oh, because that's what Paul told us. He said, not that I have attained, but I am pressing on. He that stand, he said, be watchful, lest you fall. Rapture will happen one day. This person called Jesus, that we are calling Lord, will come down and will pick his own. The redeemed of the Lord. And I will take them all. I don't want to be in church on that day. Because pastors will go to church and they will preach. But rapture has taken place. Prophets will be on the pulpit. They will prophesy. But rapture has taken place. Apostles will still declare the divine teaching. And everybody will shout, Amen. But rapture will take place. Don't you ever have a deceit that is everybody that is claiming to be Christian will make heaven. Some will pay with the blood. The redeemed of the Lord. Redemption is the key to calling him Lord. He that has transformed us from the power of darkness into the marvelous light of his son. Have you gone through the redemption process? And it's in two stages. Stage one. I was a sinner. Oh yes, I go to church. Oh yes, I died. Oh yes, I give offering. Oh yes, I'm even the head of the choir. Oh yes, I sing like a night in the other gifts. I even do miracles. But are you redeemed? When you go to the bus garage, particularly in Africa, you will see three sets of people in bus garages. Number one, you will see the driver. You will see the tout, who is called Agbu in Nigeria. And you will bus conductor. And you will then see the passengers. In a journey of long distance, on many occasions, only two of those classes travel with that vehicle. You will see the driver under the shed, possibly drinking on. He's going to drive in the next 20 minutes, but he's boozing, putting smoke. Ah, other driver, don't drink now. You know you are. He said, don't worry. We've been doing this for years. May God help you. No wonder when Nigeria is about to go on those buses, they pray. Let us pray. <laughs> and you will see the bus driver, uh, bus conductor in the bus. And they will be very tenacious. One more person, one more person. You got them. You can't be one more person. But you are standing. Sit, enter. And the next one, driver, your boss is full. And he collects his tip. So are you not going, no, 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 no. I'm loading the next one. So you see the bus driver going on, progressively with the boss. You see the passenger going on, progressively with the boss. And everybody began to drop in their place of dropping. But the bus would get to destination. But the bus conductor never leave the park. Redemption is about I enter the bus of salvation. I didn't enter it as a driver. I enter it as a passenger. I came to the cross of Christ. By faith in the word that the Holy Spirit make me to understand that I am a sinner. I am against God's will. In my current state, if I do not repent and forsake my old ways, the judgment of God is already on me. Oh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. His only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But when you get to 17, he said, whoever rejected this offering of God is condemned already. And he said the reason in there. So I accept Jesus. I ask for forgiveness. I said, forgive me of the sins I inherited from my great grandfather because the Bible said in iniquity my father and my mother begot me. So I've heard people say, I am a good man. My look, I don't hurt anybody. I'm easy going. I feed people. I don't say people that have money should look. I, I am a good man. The Bible says, All your righteousness is like a filthy rag 
before God. We still have to come through the process. It's like a student that says, I want to enter university, but I don't need admission. Oh, I am going to go and study in that university, Oxford University. I will start next year. I bought my books. I bought my ticket. I am going there. They say, did the school wrote you a letter that you've been admitted? No, that's not necessary. I just enter, sit in the class, get lecture, and four years later, I'm a graduate. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. There is a process of admission. They must question you. They must ask some things. They must bring you in and say, this is your offer. We recognize you as our student. The same way with the kingdom. You cannot get crushed into heaven. Being a member of the church will not take you to heaven. Loving the pastor as if is God and serving him with your life cannot take you to heaven. God has set up his admission process. You may not like it. It may be a message of ignorance and foolishness to those that are perishing, but to God in his wisdom, that is the only way you want people to make heaven. And you know what? That is not religion. Because religion is man getting to God. Salvation is God reaching to man. I said it's in two stages. As soon as I accepted Jesus into my life as my Savior, what happened? Sin shall no longer have dominion over me. Shackles of sins become broken. There are two natures of sins. There is sins as sin, I like to call it the terrorist sin. Sin that have dominion. Sin that take people off stage. Premeditated saying that you can just help yourself. I was I was on the road one day and a guy was rushing to everybody that was on the bus. You have lighter than this. You have and he was holding the packet of seven. You need to see the tenacity. You have lighter than this. Do you, you have lighter? Yes, do you have and I stopped him and said, Hold on. How are you? I'm fine. What do you need lighter for? Oh, I need to have a fag. What does this thing do for you? Look at what they inscribe on the cigarette packet. To exonerate your liability that this thing kills. So I don't care. I need to have a fire. I need to have a fire. That is a domineering sin. Sin is an hostage taker. It takes people's mind. It takes people's talk. It takes people's body. It takes people's thinking. It also takes their soul and hand it in their fire. But when I say, Lord, help me, whoever call upon the name of the Lord by mercy shall be saved. And it's not just asking for salvation. It's ensuring that you are determined to forsake your old ways. The Bible says forsake. Then the next thing, you are in the boss of God. You've entered into the big glory of God, moving to eternity. Then all of a sudden, as you sit in some buses, particularly if it's on the flight on the air, you will see the announcer start saying, Welcome passengers on board. We need to tell you the safety uh, messages or the regulation or instruction you need to know on this airplane as we're cruising at so-so level. Now, your seatbelts, and they will tell you everything. Instruction will be given. That is the Holy Spirit rising up and giving instruction. As many that are being led out of those that say, by the Spirit of God, they become the sons of God. We were all born children, but we are no longer children. Even the children in our midst can't wait to grow up. Some children want to grow up because they are tired of others in the house. I've been there. So don't blame them. I can, ah, in those days when my mom served my father's food, they would give me just one fish. One. It's big old, because I'm the firstborn. But he will give my dad about three, four, five different assorted meat fishes and said, take your rabbit's food to the table. So when I go, I said, mom, there's only, say what? One fish. You gave daddy five. You gave me one. He said, are you my husband? No, I'm not your husband. Do you put the money down? How old are you? You are still a child. Then she used to say one day. He said, wait till when you get to your own house. Your wife will cook and will give you everything. I said, I cannot wait to grow up. Start cooking my food, my wife will serve the table. And truly, now I'm enjoying that benefit. I'm now telling my own children, wait till when you get to your own home, your wife or your husband will serve a lot of meat. But for now, this is my entitlement. The only spirit 
will teach you all things. And that is what grew us in the spirit. Does that mean you will not make errors? You would. It's part of the training. But you must not die by backsliding. Iniquity will come. Holy Spirit will lead you aright. If you mistakenly sin, we have an advocate before the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible said. Mistakenly sin. So what does that mean? It's not a sin of intentional. It is a sin of mistake. You said the wrong word. Oh, I'm sorry for what I said, Lord Jesus. I shouldn't have said that. You rest it till you go to where you need to. I'm sorry for what I said to you. I was just upset. It's okay. It's a learning process. It's not the same like somebody that committed adultery or somebody that robbed a bank. You plan it out. Are we redeemed? Is the question. If you are redeemed, what stage are you in the journey to eternity? Are you still a child? Or you have been allowing the Holy Spirit to grow you into becoming a son of God. You hear I didn't say a daughter. Please, I'm not sexist. I just need to quickly say this. In the realm of the Spirit, we are all man within. But for us to be able to have a presence here and to function, God puts a man inside a female body, a man inside a male body. So what you are able to see today, I'm a man, I am a female. That is the body, the mobile house you are walking through. Everybody dropped their mobile house when they die. The thing that came out of everybody called the spirit of the soul is a man. God wants sons. In the realm of the spirit. And he says sons abided at home forever. And another name for sons is a stage of maturity. Growing up. God wants us to grow up. The redeemed of the Lord. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What should they say? The redeemed of the Lord must always say, I give thanks to the Lord because they are God's redeemed. They are not giving thanks because God gives them car. No. Hear this revelation. They are not giving thanks to God because of the happenings around them. I have just bought a new house. No. They are giving thanks to the Lord because they are God's redeemed. At the end of everything here, if you still do not make heaven, you started a lifetime eternity in hell. These are messages you don't hear in church anymore because prosperity, let me put it right, a cheap prosperity has taken over. People will use 98 hours to teach about prosperity. There's no more time to come and teach about the real prosperity. Because the real prosperity is seeking first the kingdom, salvation. Seek is righteousness. That is allowing the Holy Spirit to develop. He said the rest, God will have it to you. Why not? If I have a child, I always do my bidding, listen to me, obey me. I will go all lengths to make them happy. You hear some parents when they want to die, they disinherit a child. Is the level of how disappointed they are in that child. I'm not saying it's good, but it happens. But they will not disinherit a child that has always made the father and the mother happy. They are number one on the list. He said, You say everything I got in that area, I give it to my son. I give it to him because why I'm alive, they make me happy. If you allow God's wishes to be done in your life, after you've been redeemed by salvation, you release yourself to the Holy Spirit who is inside you. Because the moment we are saved, God put a guarantee on us. He didn't just save us. He placed a seal on us. What is the seal? The Holy Spirit. You can see why David was so touched in his prayer to God in Psalm 51. Do not take your salvation from me. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Two things were mentioned there. Salvation, the joy of my salvation, and the Holy Spirit. Because those tools are what God gave to redeem us. What you do with the Holy Spirit will determine the level of your growth. Are we growing? Because church will tell you Churches will tell you, our church is growing. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you, can you give evidence? Oh, we used to be 300, but now we are 5 million. 5 million of armed robbers that rob God. 5 million of 
girls that will not pay tithe and offering. Five millions of girls that when it's time to suck, they don't have a time. Five millions of girls that beat their wife and beat their husband. Five millions of girls that still drink in the secret places. Five millions of some pastors that even smoke. He said, no, I do it because, you know, the tension of ministry is just too much. You know, I need to cool myself. Are you a hearing? You know, it's a profession. I've shared this with you before. When I was going through my immigration issue, in the place where they kept us in the holding center. There's a priest there that took, he just liked me. He said, Martin, you, you should not be here. You should be relieved. You have every reason to be helped. So I will see what I can do for you. But tell me your story. So as I sat with him, was wearing his white casket, and we sat together, Bible in hand, because he just finished preaching to us. Father, yes. He said, hold on. The next thing I saw, you reach into the inner pocket with a white gown. Maybe you want to bring Ankashi. No, sir. He brought something that says smoking kills. Ha. Ah. He opened the box. He said, hold on, listen. Come on, listen to me. He brought out the stick. He put it in his mouth. He now pointed to me. He said, do you care for one? I said, no. Number one, the culture of where I came from, the Christianity over there doesn't believe in this. I rather stick with the old Christian religion. Rather than taking this new age gospel. Paul said, if anybody bring another gospel to you that is not gospel, let him be accursed. Also, Paul plays cause. Hear this. He began to smoke away. Immediately, I lost desire. The respect I have for this man of God dropped. I began to tell myself, God can never hear prayer with this man. Don't even waste your time. Because I know the Bible. God does not hear a sinner. Anyway, you, you see, we are going to pray. We will pray now. I said, Lord, where your eyes be, if not the way, a problem we brought, you <laughs> go to mingle with chicken. I, I told myself, after about 10 minutes, even the thing was shocking me. So he noticed that I was uncomfortable. The way I would do this. Oh, he said, oh, I hope you don't have issues with this. Who am I to tell father I say I have issues? I, I said, no, sir. I said, but the Bible, I said, it's not written in the Bible, thou shalt not smoke. He said, the weather is cold. This is UK. You just came. You get used to it. I said, but the Bible said, whoever defy the temple of the living God, Okay, table turn from, you want to pray for me now, I begin to talk. I said, can you buy a house and begin to do uh, firewood cooking inside your city room? I said, that's a different, I said, your body is a temple of the living God. Where God dwells? Father, you are putting smoke. Then I realized, look, don't even ask for prayer. So within five to ten minutes, he lost interest. He said, you know what? We will talk another day. So me to carry my Bible, I left. Nearer to thee, O God. Nearer to thee. That's the one you know. What about those that will send their children to go out and buy beer? Hot. When you are coming, take this kettle. Pour it and bring the kettle out. And for you, you think they are drinking hot tea. Until that is is changed. All of a sudden, they drink one, they drink two, they are, Jesus! They said the anointing is place. not the anointing. It's the power of the beer. What about those that pour, drink, Hot shina, mingle everything together and pour inside a bottle of coke. Oh, things are happening. He said, Look, I am shy. When I come on the pulpit, I want to preach in the face. It's not strong. You can face these people. To be able to talk to them, you need to chat yourself. The Redeemer say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. What are you saying for the past 21? Uh, 2019. What do we say? Do you say a word of complaints? Do you say a word of anger? Do you say a word that brings fight? Or you are saying a word that thank God? Where I went yesterday in a graduation ceremony, one of the ministers, the minister, said something. He said, I realized at every occasion, no matter what is happening, I am the one on trial. So when I'm driving my car on the way and somebody drives recklessly and then abuse me on top of it 
I couldn't tell myself, I am the one on trial. The Bible said, We are such a witness stand that is washing us. They are not being washed, it's you being washed. He said, When my wife talked to me, anyhow, I quickly tell myself, I am the one on trial. Is either I react or I respond. Heaven will take note. When he said that, that thing touched me. God. So in every occasion and every situation that heaven allow us to go through, we are the one on the testing ground. You either react or you respond. And heaven will take note. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. What have you said in 2019? Have you been gossiping? Is that why you say so? Have you been abusing God? Is that the say so? Some people are gradually deteriorating to a state of hating God with passion. Why? Because the only thing they see is somebody else's blessing. You just bought a new car. Yes. Hey. You changed your car two years ago. You changed it again. Yeah. Ha. Ah. Now, well. Uh, and they go inside, God, I don't know what I do. You are evil. Why? Because that was a strange car. Do you know the days they've been using lead to work? Everybody times of God's breakthrough differs. Yes. Your clock is not my clock. No. Even if we are born the same day, we are not born the same hour. Yes. If we are born the same hour, we are not born the same minute. Yes. If we are born the same minute, you will not go. I, your timing of living here is different to my time of living here. <coughs> I know people that are my age may have gone. What did I want that to be? There's a man of God. Anytime I see that man of God in the U.S. on the TV, many years ago, I would go before the TV. I would kneel down. I would grab the TV. I say, Lord, make me like this man. Make me like this man. Make one day my wife look at me and say, Oh, next time up. I say, Why? You will not be like that man. You will be you. You know why your wife called you to order? I stood up. My ego hurt, but within me, I know this is the truth. He said, you know why I said that to you? You can't be like that man. There will not be a duplicate of that man. And you will not walk in his shadow. He has taken the glory of his time. People will not recognize. Ah, don't you see a lot of ministers that talk like certain ministers? Mm. And they will speak like that ministers. And everybody, oh, that is T.D. Jakes. But it's not T.D. Jakes talking. They are now a shadow of who they want to copy. I'm not saying we don't emulate but let God make you who you are meant to be. Yes. So I stopped praying that prayer. Later, some scandals began to happen. Bad scandals that I don't want to associate with personally. When a man crossed level into another man, and eventually he died. Conflicting information began to come out that he died of AIDS or HIV. And some say otherwise. Some say it's cancer. But well, this is the point. The Holy Spirit now came to me. He said, the person you want to be like has finished his time here, has gone. If I have made you like him, you too will go the way he went at his timing. Do you want to now wait for what I'm planning for you? Or do you still want to be somebody else? If they are enjoying their benefit, thank God for it. You don't know how long they have to live. Don't envy anybody's timing. Stay within your journey. I have seen a lot of failures and disappointment. But at this age, I've come to realize life is up and life is down. And when you go through it, with God on your side, you will come at the other side of the mountain and you will testify. Amen. Don't look at somebody else's clock because that will stop you from thanking God. Mm. They have a big car to God be the glory. Yours will come. Amen. Don't envy them. That God, look, this is why I say if my neighbor is being blessed by God, it means God is in my neighborhood. Yes. You didn't hear what I just said. I heard if my neighbor is being blessed, it means God is in my neighbor. I so you. when he finish with him, who is next? That is so simple. Just get it right. Attract his attention. Let him know. He knows where you are located. He put the same God that put John the Baptist into the jungle was the one that planted Jesus in the city. Hallelujah. But both of them do their work. Right in the jungle, food I was eating was nothing. When I read the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 18, the Bible says, uh, let's quickly look at it as I finish. And then total time is gone. Hallelujah. 
So I'm going to finish with this. I hope God has been a blessing to somebody. Hallelujah. You have a reason to go home from this day and forth and begin to say, Lord, no matter what come my way, I don't know, but I believe your word has said, for you know the plans and the thoughts that you have concerning me. Once you have that understanding, there is nothing to worry about. I believe it's the book of Luke. I believe it's the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 80. If I'm not mistaken, it's a very long book. For whatever reason, they have written it this long. Here it is. The Bible says, this guy had an assignment that was described, and this is John, by the way, the Baptist, up to verse 78. When you look at that assignment, the time permit me 76 says, and thou child shall be called the prophet of the eyes, not the prophet of man. And that is why he was hidden. That is why he was not exposed. Man of God, God has not exposed you. You may be a prophet of God. Stand before God, take instruction. He will reveal you out when the time comes. A prophet unto the most high, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. Look at his mandate. It's not to go before the face of man. It's to go before the face of God and prepare. He was a prophet unto intercession. You didn't catch that. He was not a prophet that came out and said, one leg grow, one hand grow. What choice that you wear yesterday? This is your street. I don't care. I am not saying God can do that, but there's also a lot of fake. This prophet called John, his assignment is to stand in the presence of God because he came in the power of Elijah. Who also said before God, we are I stand. And what is he doing in the presence of God? Preparing the way of the Lord. He was not meant to be seen in the open. You now see why his ministry was hidden. For a little while until he was brought out. If you don't understand the plans of God for your life, you will just run around like yo-yo and pendulum. And the enemy will frustrate you. He that brought you here has a purpose. How many of us, while we're in our mothers, will prepare the food we eat every day? How many of us know how you spend your time for those nine months inside your mother's womb? Tell me the events that happen with that nine months from the day of your conception to the day you were delivered. We don't know, but God knows eh, why you are inside your mother's womb. Jeremiah chapter 1. I know you. I even call you by name. Your parents have not even thought of the name. Because a parent doesn't know whether it's a boy or a girl. I went to minister in a church. This family has been looking for children for a very long time. I went with Pastor D, and the husband was in Dubai, and he came forward, and I prayed. And God answered, but there's a particular woman that also came up. The Pastor D can remember, he's an old woman, an elderly woman. I said, you two, are you looking for it? I said, no, not me, sir. He's my relative in uh, Nigeria. Okay, as we began to pray, the Lord told me, the woman, we, the person is praying for, we give back to a boy. I said, this is what the Lord says, I will pray for you, lay hands on you. I want you to now call the woman in Nigeria and transfer the blessing to her. He said, sir, I said, that's what the Lord said. I will pray for you. Go and pray for her. The baby will have you. Lo and behold, that month, the woman conceived. The woman that had been looking for a child for a very long time. She conceived. To call the long story short, they went to the hospital to check the baby. Doctor said, the thing we are seeing inside this can is a girl. So the woman said, but the man of God said, you are going to give back to a boy. He said, doctor said, it's a girl. They call me. I said, the thing God told me is that he's a boy. That is not a girl. So look at two contradictions. Science and God. The word of the prophet and the word of the doctor. And they are all significant. So the woman chose to go and do what the doctor said. So she went out and she began to shop. First child. And she bought girl stuff. Girly, girly, girly. Scan show is a girl. So let's believe scan. As if it's the doctor that put it there. The word of the prophet was declared and God opened the womb. Now the second stage, no, the prophet doesn't have a say. We can help ourselves. Lo and behold, a year later, I went for a function in that church. The woman rushed to me. Man of God, prophet, I need to tell you a testimony. Do you remember me? She explained herself. This is what happened. And I the pastor said, okay, what did she give up? He says, an embarrassment. When the baby was pulled out, it was a boy. All the clothes, you know, the pink, pink, pink. <laughs> so they are like, we can wear pink for a boy. Say, but the prophet told you. The prophet told you it's a boy. Children are God's heritage. He that sent it away, he said, science are only looking through a fake mirror. Mm -hmm. 
What they know, they know. What they don't know, they don't know. If you read that place in Luke chapter 1, verse 18, when you now get to verse 18, it says, And the child grew, and he was strong in the spirit, and was in the desert. Take note of that word. Till the day of his showing forth to the people of Israel. God kept John away for a purpose so that he may grow in the spirit. Man of God, woman of God, if you come out too soon and you have not fully grown in the spirit, the pressure of the world will destroy you. No wonder they started ministry and many never finished well. If God is keeping you away, it's not your assignment, it's God's assignment. Don't overrun God. And in any area God is keeping you away, you have a skill, you want to start a business, and something is holding you back. Moment you pray and you know that it's not to do with sin. Hold on for God's timing. He said, keep humbling yourself. For either humble himself shall be exalted. I will say and I'll finish. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That in his appointed time, he will lift you up. There is an appointed time for the Bible says, there is a time for unceasing and buckles for everything under what? Under heaven. Give thanks to the Lord for it is good. I encourage you and I as we go into this new year, recognize who your Lord is, make him your Lordship, respective of you are a student, you are a working class, let everybody know that Jesus is my Lord and give thanks to him. Build that relationship. Thank him for one thing only. You have been redeemed. When you are redeemed, every needed thing in life has been prepared and labeled with that word for the redeemed. He that has given us all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Let us pray. Thanksgiving will bring it down in due time. And Father, we thank you for the word of knowledge, for your wisdom. Amen. Ignorance is what is destroying our world. But you say we cannot be ignorant because the great teacher will teach us all things. Amen. For the word you have given to us, I declare today you will give us perception. Amen. You will give us your understanding. Amen. And you will give us wisdom of application. Amen. So that our life will not be the same again. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.